G'day everybody, thanks for coming. John from Edible Forest Garden. We're going to talk about some cubes today. This is one of my favourite subjects. I've really become a, quite a passionate uh, person about this particular subject because there's such a range of tubers other than the common potato and even sweet potatoes, which are more common now but at the beginning. There's so much food that's not available in Western society um, in this range of edible foodstuffs. It's really exciting. And we're, I'm going to show you how to harvest, and we're going to have at the end of it, we're going to have some to actually eat, so we, you can all have a taste of what they're like in there. Steam, most of them have been steamed, so you can have a bit of a taste today. And, and the, 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 um, how easy these things are to grow is just phenomenal, a lot of these. The easiest things to, in the harvest. Um, potatoes are such a, a fairly bland crop for the most part. Uh, there's a lot of different varieties of potatoes, and we'll have those available as well down, down the track, but it's harvest season before we give it a go. So we're going to start with a couple of things. We're going to start on a, a plant called Yakon. Fabulous looking thing in a pot. Look at that. <laughs> Yakon. Comes from the high Andes. Um, um, it's a really easy plant to grow. I've been growing this now for uh, probably five, six years. Um, extremely easy to grow. Sun, shade. Um, and we've got two different forms. We've got a, a tall form which grows to about, uh, typically about two metres. And we've got a dwarf form now which grows only about a metre high. As expected, the dwarf form produces a smaller tuber. Um, and of course, the reverse. Um, the tubers can get to this sort of size, quite large. The, um, they call them the, um, um, the Incas call them the sweet root. It's very, very sweet. It's not like a tuber. In fact, if you go to um, their marketplaces, they'll, they'll tend to market it, not in the vegetable section, but in the, in the fruit and veggie section. It's very good. It's got a texture somewhat like a um, water chestnut um, and a bit of an apple-y um, apple sort of celery sort of flavor. Really easy plant to grow. It's from the sunflower family. Um, and like a lot of sunflower of that family, like Jerusalem artichoke, which you also may know, um, it has um, inulin as its main starch. Now, we're not particularly good at uh, absorbing inulin, it's particularly good for us, really good for our digestive tract, that type of thing. Um, but we have a little bit of trouble digesting large quantities of it. You know, if anybody's familiar with Jerusalem artichokes or party jokes, that's one of the reasons. But this nowhere near it. It's really, really good. Is that the same with the potato? Is that that's a different starch? That's a different starch, yeah. It's, um, but really good for um, um, raw or cooked. In fact, you'll buy this yakon in um, health food shops. Yeah, as a juice. Because it's a really watery sort of piece of it. Um, and they'll juice it and concentrate it down and make a syrup out of it. Really good. So we'll do some harvesting so you can have a look at actually what they are. And you see how prolific these things are. I start with, so we'll just harvest that up. Would have been something probably about, you've got two distinct forms of tuber on these. You've got your, your, your harvest tubers, which are these guys, those sorts of things. And then you've got your, what you call growth tubers. So it won't something, grow from one of those? One of those. It won't grow from one of the other ones? No. It's just, yeah, you just actually harvest all those. You can leave it in the ground. I've got one in the ground now for four years. Haven't bothered harvesting. It's fine. It grows beautifully. Um, they're of the sunflower family, so they come up and have lovely little yellow flowers. Really pretty. Uh, quite late in the season. But that's, yeah, to give you an idea, yeah, how abundant is that? Just one small pot. It's incredible. And you just replant it again. I tend to use them like you would uh, a water chestnut. They've got that sort of consistency. Raw is probably the best thing. Mm -hmm. You peel them or just scrub them and just slice them up and you see what's going on. Um, you've 
you can leave them, if you leave them out for a little, a little time out of what you've harvested, they can sweep off the So if some of the indoor and extra gets transferred into your sugars and the process, that's used to the way of tubers. We just harvested these the other day. Anybody seen what we know what that is? It's a sweet mm. potato. Uh, just grown in a pot. That's the pot. Um, mm. So you can grow sweet potatoes down here quite readily. They're not that hard to grow. Um, this was give you an idea. Yeah, typically you'll get that size. That's a that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Um, easiest plant in the world to grow, but what they do require is a long growing season. This particular cultivar, the white one seems to be the best for Victorian conditions, the other one's not as much, but you will get reasonable production. You've got to grow them in full sun with the sweet potatoes. Prepared earlier. Right. Okay, here you go. So just growing in a pot. to get reasonable sort of yields, even in a pot. And there's the plant there. It'll start to die down completely and probably die. They're easiest plants to, you know, to grow from cutting. So once you buy one and start to grow them from, from uh, so you buy them in season, typically spring, you can put them aside and they'll shoot and you can grow cuttings from the shoots and then propagate them that way. Um, but they're, they're fairly good. They're pretty, pretty productive plant, but they need lots and lots and lots of sun to do well. Yeah, you put, um, typically once it starts warming up, so you put them in around the same time you put in your tomatoes. So I usually cut that, that type of thing. Then it would be this time of year then, so if you plant them a couple of days this yep. year. Now they're just, for the first frost, these guys have just gone back down. And we've harvested them accordingly. And we've, but we've taken cuttings, yeah. put them aside ready just in case. Um, really high protein leaf crop, too, which a lot of people don't realise. Um, you can actually eat the leaves and steam the leaves. Really nutritious for you. That's actually one of the main reasons I grow it, is for the leaf, the actual leaf crop. Certain varieties are better than the leaf crop than others. It's different. It's yummy. Um, also, a Filipino friend of mine. You told me that you actually, if you're cooking fish, you get that really fishy smell. I'm not a chef, but she told me this and we've tried it, it works. And you put the leaves around the fish, it absorbs all that smell from the fish, and you don't get that wandering through your kitchen. And you can cut the stuff around. So, what about this guy? This is a. Everybody heard of a canner? Arrowroot? Another name for them? Yeah. Right. Harvesting is a little bit easier on the ground than, than this, but in order to get the and these produce a really good. This is a particular form of edible canner. There's about oh, 20 or so cultivars of arrowroot or edible canna. The cannas you grow in the garden is a general plant, so you can eat, but these are certainly far better. So if they refuse to flower, you can pick them up and You can threaten them with an axe, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Might not next but no. incredibly productive. <laughs> Really, really good plant because they flower really well. They're a lovely plant in their own right. Good stuff. But that gives you an idea. Mm. And that's the bit you actually eat the actual tuber themselves. There's a couple of different forms. This one's the Queensland arrowroot, and then we have a red, flower, a red form as well. And once you've harvested that, you just take off all the roots.
I mainly bake these. And you can also use it as a good green vegetable when they start to shoot. You can hopefully harvest it as a veggie as well. You end up just taking all that sort of stuff off. Very starchy is the arrowroot thing that suggests. And good thickening agents, so they're really starchy. They've got the largest, um, a very, very large starch molecule. In fact, you can see it with the naked eye. Um, in Vietnam and things like that, places like that, and China, they, they'll harvest this and pound it and grate it and extract the starch and then make a noodle out of it. It's very, very nutritious, oh, highly valued. And as a plant, if anybody doesn't know the actual plant, it tends to grow about this high. It'll grow anyway, pretty much. Sun, shade, easiest part of the world to grow. But you can see, incredibly productive. They found a bit of moisture, yeah. They, but they'll tolerate our conditions quite well. They'll get us past them. No, I'm good. I'm good. This is the yakon that we tried before, so we're just going to pass that around and see if we want some. And, uh, yeah. It's quite sweet. Yes, well, that's another, it's a classic permacultural plant. The old um, arrowroot, uh, particularly in Queensland, it uh, produces a lot of um, leaf material, and you can just harvest that every year. I've made some beautiful compost in various gardens from using this material. So once you chop it down and you lay it in an area, it takes a while to break down, and then you plant it uh, in amongst that, it forms a beautiful compost. Really good store for prep area. Uh, a lot of the perennial crops have evolved to not need heavy inputs. Uh, whereas a potato crop, uh, in uh, because we've been growing that more as a monoculture, we've sort of selected for high inputs and higher by well, sort of pest control and with uh, pest problems with potatoes because we've been growing them all over the world as a monoculture crop. Whereas these are just a lot easier to grow. And virtually it's a ground nut. Hasn't got a particularly good name, ground nut. I mean, it's, you know, I think the Americans want to rename it. It's an American crop. It was used um, as a main crop by the American Indians. And it's not a nut. Probably one of my favourite plants um, in my forest garden. Really good. Um, it's, a, it's a pea family. It's not a pea family. So, it's a nitrogen fixer. So it's really good. It provides other nitrogen for the other plants in the system. It grows, as you can see, as like, uh, sort of like a wisteria, a small scale wisteria. Um, so typically that's that's pretty much the height you're going to get. So fair, compared to a normal wisteria, fairly sedate. Um, so you treat it more like a bean almost, of course, which is related to. Um, do this um, so it's very much posterior like uh, foliage. Dies down every year, reshoots. Um, the flowers are they're late in the season and really nice. It's quite small. We will go see the, the perking is the It's been stunning, absolutely stunning. I haven't found anybody who doesn't like the perking. It's really worth going alone. This is a garden plant just for the perking. Um, but as a staple, It'll go in sun, shade. I grow mine actually up into some of my fruit trees quite happily. Lovely thing. Um, but it's a nut we want, it's the tuber we want to talk about. Now the protein on this guy is really high, about 17% compared to a normal potato, which is about 5% protein. So they're really high, so when you eat these things, you get really full very quickly. So they're high energy. Um, contain a large amount of carbohydrate. Uh, the photonutrient that they have is very similar to the one found in soybeans. Um, and it's been linked to um, lower levels of breast and prostate cancer. So there's a lot of interest in this from the medical community as well. Um, it certainly benefits the cardiovascular system and has a lot the same sort of amino acids um, as do the beans, which are really lovely. Um, and you can use the tubers, um, bake them, fry them, chip them, do whatever you want to do with a normal potato. 
You can dry them and make flour out of them. You're sort of getting the picture. I, I like this plant. It's really good. So we'll give you an idea of the harvest. Um, give you an idea of what the fuel looks like. This is the plant that has been growing in here. They do get bigger than this. I've had tubers of this size. Um, the Americans were telling me that they wanted to go back to the drawing board on this because the ones they were growing could only get to this size and they're very disappointed. But um, We've seemed to have lucked on a particularly good cultivar um, and it doesn't produce any viable seeds so it's going to become a weed species. Decent sort of tubers. I started off with three tubers of this five years ago to give you an idea. And it sort of grows in these long strings. No, I started with three tubers five years ago and now, uh, yeah, bucket lights now. So it's the sort of plant you, so when you're only going to buy this from me once and there's no excuses. When was that one planted? Uh, when was that one planted? This was planted, uh, forget this, this is this year's. This is one year's crop in a pot. Um, and a little bit of dress. So you can see what's happening. So once you find the tuber, once you find the string, you just follow it and get another one. So can I ask just what size did you put in? That size. Oh, and that's 12 months. Yeah. So, okay. really easy plant to grow. Um, they like a little bit of water, yeah. um, but they give you an idea sort of the production of them. It's quite easy. And you just you know, harvest. These are lovely to harvest, these little ones. They're good. You just peel them up, um, steam them, do whatever you want to do to them. So if they do all right in a pot, they do really well in something like a raised garden bed as well. Really well. Yeah, I had three and I planted them in my my vegetable garden, and yeah, we just got bucket loads. Like, the first year we got a whole pot like that, that in the first year. And um, so, yeah, yeah only, you're going to buy one. So, John, would you pick those out to replant? You just And um, what, you, what you will find, though, is even something like you leave that in the ground accidentally, it'll pop up. It's not inclined to become a weed though because they're not that rampant. Um, so it's not like a, um, like a wisteria that takes over some of those countries. <laughs> and when would you plant this one? You plant these ones, you can plant it now, it'll be fine. You plant them any time. They'll, just, they'll stay on the ground. What sort of pests would you be looking out for for these? Nothing. They don't have I've had anything touch them at all. I'm sure something will develop. Yeah. yeah, they're fairly new in, in Australia. Males, I reckon. Um, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, that's about it. Something like a, a critter will come and eat that. It gives you an idea. Oh, there you go. You can see that. Yeah, they're pretty prolific. They're just a lovely plant. Um, yeah, you can. And like a few plants, you can harvest any time of year. There's a bandicoot around the bottom. Same, um, same to a certain extent with the yukon. We're talking about that before. Okay. Um, you can tend to harvest that any time of year. You can yeah. down broke one off. Can you turn it like a potato where you just sort of just walk in, get some out, and just cover it up and go back and get some more yep. food? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Unlike a lot of plants, um, they produce all the, all the year round, so it's not going to be that tuberized all the time of year. 